Let's get started. Thank you again to everyone for coming out today. Um, really excited to tell you about our programming for today. We have uh, two guests who are joining us from New Zealand. We actually have several guests that are joining from New Zealand, but two of our presenters, um, Hennessy Griffiths and Sam Wiles from Film Convert. And they're going to be um, demonstrating uh, the Film Convert plugin and also the Cinematch plugin. And with a focus on the C500 Mark II, but um, as they'll explain to you, the plugin works with just about every camera, every cinema camera that's out there, and certainly our full line of cinema EOS cameras. Um, we're gonna, the way we're gonna structure today's event is we're gonna hold the questions until the end of the formal presentation. There'll be plenty of time to ask questions. Um, if you wanna put your questions in the chat, you're welcome to do that. What we'll do is we'll call on you and ask you to open your microphone if you're comfortable doing that. If you're not, um, we can ask the question and Sam or Hennessy can, can answer. So I'll ask you to hold your questions until the formal Q&A period. And in the meantime, if you could just mute your mic and until we get to that portion, that would be great. So without further ado, let me introduce to you Hennessy Griffiths and Sam Wiles from Film Convert. Hello everyone, I hope everyone is doing well. And I'm Hennessy here with Film Convert and I'm gonna be showing you how our plugins Film Convert and Cinematch can make your post-production life a whole lot easier. But before we wine and dine you with our presentation, we should properly introduce ourselves first. So my name is Hennessy, I am the communications manager here at Film Convert and I'm joined by our color engineer, Sam, who'll be taking us through some live demonstrations in a bit. But we're a company based in Wellington, New Zealand, and at the moment, we're actually in lockdown due to the pandemic, which is why we're at home at the moment. But that isn't stopping us from giving you all of the solutions that you'll need for your post-production process. Our main goal as a company, though, is to give power back to the filmmaker. And we do this by providing you with the best film emulation, color grading, and camera matching software out there. We believe that color grading is such a vital and creative part of any post-production process, but it shouldn't be such a headache, which is why we've created these simple and easy to use tools so your story can reach its full potential. Our software is simple and easy to use, but it's designed for everyone, from amateur filmmakers to professional cinematographers and all of those in between. We've been used on an array of different works, such as HBO programs, music videos, feature films and documentaries, and even some Beyonce videos. And you know what Beyonce says, if you like it, then you should have put Film Convert on it. We have two different products here on offer that can help with your common color grading tasks, Film Convert and Cinematch. Film Convert is a film emulation and color grading suite of tools while CityMatch gives you the ultimate color correction utility, which we'll show to you soon. The main aspect that makes our software different though is not our easy to use and quick user interface, but our advanced camera profiles. We profile each camera's processes power, to which we then can gather a huge amount of different data points from every different sensor that allows us to better understand how your camera can see color. From there, we head to our lab and we conduct a series of rigorous tests so we can craft the perfect formula so you can achieve tailored transformations for your camera. We currently have over a hundred individual camera packs from all of the major camera brands across Film Convert and Cinematch. We offer 24 Canon camera packs for Film Convert and 11 for Cinematch, but we're constantly adding more to our mix. Also, shout out to Canon New Zealand for letting us borrow and profile your cameras because we honestly would not be here without you. But the first thing that we'd like to show you today is how you can use Film Convert on your next edit. And you can transform and change your story and your footage in just a few clicks. Our main objective with Film Convert is to make your footage look like film. We do this by offering 19 different film stock emulations that you can place over your footage as well as industry leading film grain, all with easy to use custom controls so you have the full power over your image. But with our Canon camera packs, we go down to the individual picture profile of each camera, including every variant of C-Log. 
meaning that you can shoot log with confidence while still being able to deliver those fast turnaround projects with a film grade that's tailored towards your camera. Honestly, Film Convert is so easy and it is so much fun to use. And just to show you it in action, our master of all, Sam will be taking us through a live grade now using some footage from the Canon C500 Mark II. Take it away, Sam. Cool, thank you, Hennessy. So I'm Sam and I'm the color engineer at uh, Film Convert. That just basically means I uh, get to play with all the cameras, which is a lot of fun. I'm the guy in the lab that goes through all the color and the dynamic range of each camera and, and tunes in the profiles that we need. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be showing you DaVinci Resolve, but it's important to know that the workflow is the exact same on Premiere Pro and Final Cut, so you can just use the same thing. So the first thing to do is go to filmconvert.com and download the plugin and download the relevant Canon camera pack. So let's jump in to, I'll share my screen into DaVinci Resolve. And hopefully everyone can see this now. We are in Resolve. And this is a sort of a beautiful archway that was provided by Canon Burbank. So thank you very much for, um, for letting us have this beautiful footage. It was, it was, it's been tricky. It's been tricky to get anything during the uh, lockdown over the last few weeks, so this really helps. Um, whatever that wide-angle lens is, I've got to get me one of those. So here's the shot in log. Um, we, uh, the first thing we want to do is go into the um, effects and search for nitrate, and we're going to want to apply that to the clip. So as soon as you apply this to the clip, we get this looking image. Now, this isn't correct because the first thing that you need to do with Film Convert is to choose your camera and camera profile. So this was a Canon camera. It was the C500. And it was shot in C-Log2 neutral. So if I apply that straight away, on application, you're getting a beautiful film look. It's just brought out these deep reds over here, this nice pale green, and you've got these, these golds. So this is, the, this is the great thing about Film Convert, right? You've got a great looking image straight away. As soon as you put it on, you're getting a look that has been used in the industry and trusted for many years. So the next thing to do is really choose the film stock, so which you which is going to be relevant for your project. So um, this is where you pick the film stocks. We've got 19 to choose from. These include uh, motion stocks at the top. We've got some color positives and color negatives. So if I go to Provia, this is our Provia emulation, a bit of a different look. We could go to the uh, portrait, which is a bit of a, a cooler look, or we can, we have a, large selection of black and white stocks. So as soon as you apply Film Convert and choose your film stock, you're really ready to go. So let me show you this next clip. Here is a, um, a shot of a cool Bruce Lee statue. Um, and what we can see from this scene is there is a high degree of dynamic range, right? The, this hot Cali sun is, is coming in from the left-hand side and it's just bouncing off these pillars and just giving us uh, a high-key looking image. And um, I don't want that. So what I want to do is bring out a little bit more detail, okay? So what we've done is we now do everything under the hood in log. We take the Canon log and we convert that to um, a Cinean film scan. So if I go over to this slider here called Cinean to print film, and I just start to bring this down, you can see the contrast just going away, but we're still getting these rich film colors from underneath. And if I take that to zero, that is, that is essentially acting as the negative film scan, right? So you've got all these beautiful, rich uh, film colors underneath, if I click Film Convert off, there's the Canon log. 
it's converted to a film log and I can just dial in this print film to exactly where I want this scene to be. So that looks good. So the next thing to tell you about is the grain that we offer. So here is, um, here we offer several variations of 35 mil and 16 mil and eight mil. Basically 16 mil is gonna soften the image and add more grain. And I, I'm not sure if you, if that comes through, but you might be able to see the softening of the image there. If I go to eight mil, you should, you should see that we go, we are very grainy and very, very soft. So for this, I want 35 millimeter, but if I wanted the, if I wanted the sharpness of 35 millimeter, but I wanted the grain strength of say 60 millimeter or eight millimeter, I can just go into these grain settings here and just boost the strength and the, and the grain size really high up. So we're getting a lot of grain in this image. If I'll just play that, hopefully that's showing up. And we're just getting a lot of grain in this image now, but we're still keeping that sharpness of 35 millimeter. We can do the opposite. We can, we could take the grain down to zero. We could, we could have no grain in our image and bring in some softness from, from the other film sizes we just want to soften the image a little bit we can do that with these sliders you've got, you've got full control over your grain now uh, which is a very powerful tool and the other thing about this is if i just if i just boost the grain strength again and the grain size here we've added this um grain response curve now this curve is the default of what 52207 film stock will give you in terms of grain, okay? So, but if that isn't right for my scene and I want to change that, I've got full control now over how I do that. So say I wanted a lot more grain in the shadows, but less in the highlights, I could just bring up the shadows and we can see in the black areas, it's getting super, super grainy. And then I bring down the highlights a little bit Bring down the midtones, and I can really tune in the grain to exactly where I need it to be for my image. So that's the grain, and I'll just. We also offer um, the traditional color grading controls like color wheels, um, which show up here as an on-screen control, and I can I can just dial in some some color into the shadows, the mids, the highlights. Um, I can use the grain film response to um, tune in the curve. So add a little bit of contrast to this image and really play, just fine tune that image to, to exactly where I want it to. And then at the very end, I can um, export a lot to use on set. So here, I'll just stop for a moment and show you. I'm actually using Film Convert right now in my camera. So if I uh, just press this button, I am now in log and I press this button, I'm back in Film Convert graded. So that's how easy it is to use Film Convert on set as well. And you can install that into your C500 using um, an SD card. So back to you, Hennessy. Thank you for that, Sam. And as you can see, Film Convert allows you to get such a polished and sleek looking finish for your footage in no time at all. Film Convert is perfect if you're after that classic, timeless and celluloid look for your footage, but that style might not always be what you want. If you're wanting a more quick and seamless grade for your footage, as well as still using Canon's own amazing color science, then CineMatch might be for you. CineMatch is a camera matching and color correction plugin that gives you the freedom of shooting with multiple cameras without any of the stress of having to match it all in post. Say for instance, you're shooting a documentary and your ACAM is a C500 shot in Canon Log 2 
but you're shooting all of your pickups on an R5 shot in Canon Log 3. Just as it couldn't get any worse, someone decides to throw in a DJI drone or even an iPhone into the mix. And now you're wondering how you're going to be able to fix all of these mismatched profiles in the editing suite. Before you spend your days trying to slave over fixing these clips, all of your problems may be solved with Cinematch. Like Film Convert, Cinematch offers a range of camera profiles, but instead of matching a camera to a film stock, it can match one camera to another. The end result then is a seamlessly matched timeline without any of the stress from multiple different sources. But also if you're a single shooter camera, or if you're a single shooter, sorry, Cinematch can be a great tool for any of those super fast color correction tasks you may come across. The primary controls in Cinematch are tailored to the curve response of your camera, meaning that you'll get much more intuitive and natural looking results when you edit using our software, almost like you had made these edits while you were shooting. As well as that, you can also use our false color views and you can quickly adjust your exposure as well as remove any color casts or white balance issues from your shots. It's honestly so easy to match clips together with Cinematch. And just to show you how easy it is, Sam will take us through again now. Cool. Thank you, Hennessy. So if I just, I'll just go back into DaVinci Resolve. And here we can see a, um, a chart from DSC Labs, which is uh, the Campbell's chart. This is... Uh, this is very good chart for analyzing real world situations. So uh, you've got multiple skin tones and you've got sky and beach, just a, just a really good chart to, you know, uh, analyze your footage. So here we have, um, this was shot in on the C500 and it was shot in C log two. So what I'm going to do is just go into Cinematch and apply Cinematch. And the first thing I want to do is choose my source profile, which is corresponds with what the footage was shot on. So this is the Canon C500 Mark II, and this was shot C Log 2 RAW. So I apply that and nothing happens. So what that's just telling Cinematch is you now, we now know exactly what the footage was shot on, and you have access to all these primary controls here which I'll come back to in a second. So we have another image of this um, of this chart, but this time it was shot on the R5. So this was shot in C log, and this is in viewing in log again. So this time I'll go over to this clip and I'll choose the Canon R5, uh, rec 2020 c log and apply that and again nothing happens so the first thing i can do is quickly apply a 709 transform to make that more viewable so that you can see it and there with one click of a button we've got a 709 transform on our footage so here's what they both look like with a generic 709 transform on and as you can see there's quite a bit of difference between these two clips um even though they're both canon the r5 doesn't quite have the warmth in the in the skin tones as the as the c500 and there's a there's a little bit of a contrast difference the pink is different in the shirt so what i'm going to do is i'm going to target the r5 to the canon c500 and let's see what we get so i choose canon i choose c500 mark ii and I choose the C log two cinema gamut raw and I click apart, apply. And there we go. We've got an image that is much more lined up in terms of colors. We've got good skin tones coming in and we've got that skies matching up really nice. And we've just matched as simple as that with one click. So what about Hennessy's situation of bringing in a DJI drone? So here's a shot from the DJI drone, the uh, X7, and this was shot in D-Log. And what I've done with this is um, I've just used um, Cinematch to apply a generic 709 transform to that. And then as we can see here, uh, the colors are completely different. 
So we got uh, m- more of a pale bluey sky. The pink is a lot hotter. Um, we have magenta in the skin tones. So what I'll do is I'll match that to the C500 again. And I'll choose Canon C500, C-Log2 Raw, and we are matched. Just like that. It's so simple with Cinematch to just match. We've got three cameras on a timeline, and we've matched them all to 709 very simply. And so the last camera that Hennessy mentioned was an iPhone. So let's see what we can do with an iPhone. Here's the iPhone. So that is completely different, right? We we have that's high key contrast. The colors are completely off, saturation, everything. So if I go over to the Cinematch controls, I've entered in the Apple iPhone uh, 12 Pro Max, and this was shot on the fantastic uh, Filmic Pro, which is an app that I'd suggest any shooter that wants to shoot on the iPhone should download. And this is using their Log V3 profile. So let's see how that matches up. So I'll just target that towards the C500 Mark II and click apply. And look, it's a it's matched. So we've got four cameras with wildly different color science on our on our timeline and we've matched them within a few clicks. So that's gonna save you a whole heap of time in post, trying to match these different color sciences up together and stuff. You can, you have no problem now using a drone if you want. Um, you can, if someone says, I want to get some drone pickups and stuff, you, you just say, no problem, I'll just use Cinematch to match them up. So let me just show you the, Here in in the matched up in log, you can see we're, we're still getting the same match under the hood without the 709 transform on. I'll put that back on. And we're just ready to hit the creative grade after that. And we have an array here of powerful tools for the primary controls and the eagle-eyed viewers among us will see that the iPhone has actually got some adjustments already made to it. So I'll show you what I did here. So if I take the um, if I take the uh, C five hundred and the iPhone, they're matching up well here. So, but the iPhone has had a white balance adjustment out of the box it looks like this, which is still a good match. It just needs a little bit of tweaking. So what I've done is use our false color view to tell me exactly where I need to put this white balance. So if I click this false color temperature on both of these clips, that is just highlighting where the color balance in the image is. So they're not too far off, but I can tell that the skin tones on the iPhone are a little bit hotter. So I can just bring that down a little bit. So, oops, sorry, that's the wrong clip. So if I go out to the iPhone, I'll bring that, that down a little bit. And I can see from the sand here and, and the sand behind where it's a little bit more neutral that they're lining up a lot better. And then we have the same thing for a tint false color where it just highlights where the magenta and the green is sitting. And there's just a, a touch more green in the uh, C500. So I'm just gonna bring the tint over just slightly for the, for the iPhone. And I'll take those off and we are matched up. So that's how easy it is to match up when white balance has been shot differently. And the, the other control I'd like to show you is our exposure control. So I've got a shot here by, um, this is the x right color checker, video color checker. And um, this is 
uh, just a great chart for showing you uh, where your seven and nine saturated primaries are sitting and, and it gives you a, a good overview of where your middle gray is sitting. So this is the middle gray and this is the patch that we're going to be focusing on. So these are both shot on the C500, okay? So the, the right-hand side is exposing to the right. So we've deliberately overexposed here so that we avoid the noise in the blacks. Let me try and show you. Like, Hopefully this is coming through. This is, this is on exposure for the middle gray of C-Log2, and we're getting a little bit of noise in the blacks. That might not be coming through on Zoom, but this, it's... There's some speckling noise there. Whereas if I overexpose this image in this overexposed version, there's there's less noise. It's a little bit of a uh, a dirty patch, but there's there's less noise in there. So if I take that to the side, uh, we've exposed to the right uh, on on this shot on the side. I'm just going to bring my scopes across so I can give you a better idea of how this looks. Um, We're, with the two charts on the scopes, on the waveform here, we can see that this right-hand chart is middle gray is sitting around 60. So it's a couple of stops over really. Um, what I can do is just use the exposure slider and bring this chart down. And you can see from the scopes, the exposure alignment is perfectly in line with the the original on exposure chart so i've got those i've got my patches exactly where i, I need them to be for a perfectly exposed c log two but i'm avoiding all that noise in uh, the in the black patch so this also works exactly the same if i'm in rec 709 i can i can just tune exactly where i need it to be and that's simple it's that simple to just re to fix the overexposed image and I no longer have the problem of noise in my blacks. So now I'll show you a different way to do that, which is um, to use our false color middle gray. So I've just brought the scopes in and taken them out and I no longer have access to my scopes. Um, so what I can do is I can click on the exposure middle gray. And as you can see on this left-hand side, it's showing us that in green, the middle gray patch is exactly where it needs to be. I'll turn this on over here. And the green is not lying, lining up with the middle gray. So again, I just bring down the exposure until that patch lines up the exact same. Just about there. And I take off the exposure and we are all lined up. So that's how easy it is to align using the power of our primary corrections. So I'll pass back to Hennessy. Just like that, you can rest assured knowing that all of your camera matching and color correction worries are gone in just a few clicks. If you're interested in giving either one of our products a go, you can download the free trial from our website, filmconvert.com, and try out all of these amazing features for yourself. We're actually having a special at the moment for 20% off, so you can get Film Convert for $139 US and CineMatch for $159 US. Unfortunately, we don't currently have CineMatch available for Final Cut Pro, but we are working on it, and so stay tuned for more details. As well as that, we're also always happy to help out with any technical issues you may have. So if something does come up or go wrong, you can always drop us an email or message us on our social channels, and we're happy to help. Alongside that, it honestly makes our day when we get to see our users work using our software. So if you do use us and post about it online, make sure to tag us in because we would love to see it and be able to share it with our community. 
Otherwise, thank you to Canon USA for having us, Canon New Zealand for watching, and for you for watching. We're also happy to announce that the Canon C500 Mark II camera pack is now available for download for both Film Convert and Cinematch. So you can head over to our website and start using it today. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we're here to answer any of your questions you may have. Great, thank you, Hennessy. Um, there's a few people who have put uh, questions in the, in the chat. So I'm going to call you out and you can open your mic and ask away and Sam or Hennessy can answer the question for you. So the first person uh, was Adrian Tan. You want to go ahead and open your mic? You had two uh, questions actually. Uh, yep. Uh, so, so first question is just to Sam. Um, I'm, I'm really curious how, how you managed to apply film convert to, to, to your webcam or your live stream footage um, and turn it on, on and off like that. Um, You're muted, Sam. Sorry about that. Hi, Adrian. Um, so it's if you've got um, if you're using the C500, it, it depends on the camera. Um, if it has a if it has a if you're able to install monitor LUTs into your camera and assign that monitor LUT to your um, to one of the function buttons, then you can easily switch it on and off. That's what I've done here. I've got a a lot assigned to one of my um, one of my buttons that I customized, and then I can switch it on and off when I need to. If your camera doesn't accept uh, monitor LUTs, these things that you can use like a, a external monitor that you can then output your HDMI into your computer, and then the most of the external monitors that are available now will have the facilities to install a lot and then you'll be able to switch that on and off quite easily. Um, so it depends on the camera, but um, with with the Canon uh, cinema line, that they, they now allow you to in, input, install your own monitor LUTs. Uh, if you just assign that to a function button, you should be able to easily switch that on and off. If you're using one of the mirrorless cameras from Canon, I believe you'll probably need to use an external monitor. Oh, okay. uh, cool. I, uh, I I did have one more question. I think okay. uh, Charles Charles just just answered it. But, but, but um, if you like to, to share your thoughts, it's just um on on um uh overexposing for for C log and and Canon RAW. Um, I mean, yeah. it, it, uh, it, are there any guidelines as to how to get a good, good exposure with, with that? I mean, or, I mean, how overexposed you should be or um, well, the thing when you're shooting in log, you've got uh, a lot of headroom um, in those highlights. So, I mean, you can still you. It's always good to still use those those awesome features that are in the camera, like zebras. If you were to use something, if you were to um, if you were to use the zebras and set them to about ninety percent, and then you know. Uh, you can you can overexpose until you know you're not, you're happy with where those uh, specular highlights are, um, and then you you know that the camera is still collecting all the data in the in the highlights. These um, Canon's published uh, it, where middle gray sits um, for each one of the different C log curves, so it's worth reading whatever white paper you can get hold of from from canon and, and and knowing exactly how that curve works but you 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 it's it's scene dependent as well it's if you if you if you're hitting uh a scene with a huge amount of dynamic range there's no camera that can that, that can capture that right we're, we're we're in the realms of like uh 12 to 15 stops of dynamic range if you're if you're shooting a scene that that just doesn't have that much light, you've you've got a whole lot of headroom to to work with in log. So just know that if you overexpose in log, you 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 do have a lot more headroom to work with, and and you can you can bring that back in quite easily in post. Um, and I, I recommend to people to shoot exposing to the right. Um, just to um, uh, avoid any denoising steps that you need in post. But um, 
hopefully that explains that. Yeah, I think let me jump in here for a second. I yeah, think yeah. One thing to remind everyone of, and it's not it's it's applies to any electronic digital camera, um, is that the sensor is made up. The best analogy is to say a bunch of buckets that you fill with light energy, and then that's converted to electricity and that's amplified and recorded. The more information you fill that bucket in, the less noise is going to be in that bucket. So the idea is to give enough exposure or enough life to the exposure so that the noise is a smaller portion of what you're capturing. And if you keep that in mind when you're exposing a scene, that, that'll help. Um, so it's either going to, the bucket's either going to be filled with noise and less picture energy, or it's going to be filled with more picture energy. And that's what exposing to the right kind of helps you. It guides you into making sure that you're, that you're giving as much energy to each of the pixels as you can. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, um, yep. yep. Oh, 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 awesome. I, I, I mean, uh, well, I mean, what, one thing I was just a little bit worried about is um, when you're supposed to arrive and you're recording the skin tones at a higher level than, than they would normally be. I mean, does that mean there's less information or detail for the skin tones, if you see what I mean? Or is that, I don't know if that set question makes sense. Well, no, no, it, it isn't. It's, 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 it's how you then bring them back. Um, if, if you've got the right controls, like, like in Cinemax, you can bring them back like no problem the 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 information is still there as long as you haven't like as long as you haven't lost any data you can bring them back as long as the the controls align with with how the camera would expose and that's that's what we built into cinematch so when you bring that exposure back in the skin tones are going to be the, the same as if if you are on exposure cool okay th th thank you very much guys no worries. Okay. Michael. Uh, Michael, this yeah. is Peter. What is right. the website again? That was said so quickly. I, I didn't it's get it. It's in the chat. It's filmconvert.com. Okay. I'll put it in the chat again. Oh, except there's no gap between film and convert. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll put it in without the gap so you can. Okay. The next question was from, um, I think was from Chi Chung. Are you there? Do you want to open your mic and ask the question? Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks. Uh, hey, guys. Um, yeah, Hi. I guess a question, question to Sam. Uh, just in terms of the camera packs uh, and applying them to your footage, um, is that kind of you assume uh, that the footage is kind of color corrected correctly uh, before you apply the camera pack? Because Obviously, if you're starting from a different base, you would get a, a different result. Um, how, how do you apply, how do you sort of uh, integrate your color correction before you're um, applying, you know, film convert or Cinematch on top? Sure. So you want to, um, so the, the primary controls are fixes for any environmental factors. So the, the, the basic color correction is, we want uh, you want to have neutral footage and you want to have well exposed footage. So the the primary controls will align the exposure and align the, the white balance as we've we've designed them to be as in line with the camera controls as we can. Um, the with the better codex, you'll get better results. But you don't you want to if you use our controls and apply film convert or cinematch onto your as your first color correct adjustment and use those primary controls, that's the best workflow you're going to get. So you, right. you so that's what the, those first ones are fixes. So if you've if you've shot overexposed and you've shot fifty six hundred Kelvin in a uh, 4,000 Kelvin scene, what you need to do is fix that. You need to bring yeah. the exposure back in and you need to align the white balance with the scene's white balance. So our controls are tuned to do that. And then as soon as you've, as soon as you've hit those primary controls, then you can then, then you, 
then you're good. You've got you've got a neutral base in Cinematch to then then go into your creative grade. Or you can in film convert, it's if you want that film look, it, it's pretty much it's there, it's done for you. You've 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 got that great film emulation straight away. Right, cool. So you would basically recommend the controls within the software that the film yeah. convert or cinematch software in, as, as opposed to your own MLE editor first and then apply sure. an adjustment or something. Yes. Yeah, so it, it should be the first one because, you know, we, we, right. we, we really, we, we've really um, spent a lot of time on these, on these, on our exposure and white balance controls, a generic adjustment just won't cut it. And mm-hmm. that's what, what other people offer. You know, we have a lot of, we, we have a lot of, uh, camera data we know how all these cameras work and and what color they see and stuff like that and we mm-hmm. we know that these tools need that information we we know that those adjustments are necessary because uh your your generic exposure slider that you're going to get in your nla is just not going to bring things back into place as well as ours do so okay. we definitely recommend you use those yeah, I've, I've been confused myself with what to use on, on those. So, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good shout. Thank, thanks for that. Um, cool, no worries. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, next question was from Jose Calderon. Jose, do you want to open your um, microphone? Are you still here? Okay. I guess he's left the meeting. Uh, his question was, when making exposure corrections, do you do that on the base clip on your NLE, or do you use adjustment on film convert? Do you lose your raw adjustments once you drop film convert on your clip? Oh, so the so um, if you shoot in raw codec, if 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 you shoot in raw, the we've designed our our our, our controls to be as close to raw as possible, um, but the the controls that you're going to get with 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 Canon's own software for for RAW, you know that's that's at at the debating stage, right? So so those fixes are really really accurate. So if you can, it's always best to use um, you know your, your RAW adjustments to bring everything in line. Um, but for everything for everything else if you're using compressed anything um i suggest making those adjustments with us okay are there any other questions from the audience uh yeah can i um ask a question sure. um <clears throat> hi from australia uh, i i've got film convert and uh city match open in front of me and i'm I can't find the. Uh, well, I've downloaded the new camera packs, but yeah. um, do I need to download them? Oh, sorry, delete them from DaVinci Resolve, like delete the plugins altogether and then reload new plugins. No, if you've if you've installed the camera pack, then it, it should just appear. Well, it doesn't come up on the. You know, when you you go into um, into the software, into the into the plugin, you go choose source profile. But up from the drop down menus, there's no C500 Mark II. So I don't have know. You, I... Have you installed the, has, has the install of the camera pack been successful? Uh, it's, I've downloaded it, but I haven't actually double clicked on it. And like, yeah, yeah. You need, to, you need to install the camera pack and then it'll, um, then it'll appear in the drop down. Um, once you install it as well, I think you may need to restart your editors and then it should be able to show up then. But also if it doesn't end up working, you can just email us at support at filmconvert.com and we'll be happy to help you out. Yeah, groovy. Okay, great. So is there any benefit in, in, up in like, I've got Cinematch 1.05 um, and I think Film Convert from a few months ago. Is there any benefit in upgrading the plug-in or is it just yeah there's like um like any software it's 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 always best to to update because um these like the the oh. 1.06 of cinematch will have the new uh c500 pack and the the um 
the the new version of the, the, these it, it's not just um it's just it's not just how our software works it's how the software works with with Macs or with Windows things uh you know a, Apple and Microsoft are always updating the the um, operating systems, which can then uh, change, you know, how how our plugins um, perform. So it's always best to stay updated. Right. Cool. Thank you. Um, Fred had a question about when the uh, Komodo profiles will be available for Cinematch. Right. So um, we, we were, <laughs> we, it's we were been very a close. Long saga. Yeah. We were very close to getting, uh, we had, um, we had someone that was going to come over with the red Komodo and we had everything set up. And then because of the pandemic that got canceled. Um, so we were, we were in the middle of setting that up again and then we got on lockdown again. So that's the thing with, with, with the way that we do things, we always get our hands on the cameras and we, and we, we, we capture a whole lot of data from them, but we need to get hold of the cameras. Um, and, uh, right now that's just fallen through a couple of times, but, um, stay tuned. We'll, we'll have it out to you soon. Great. So I had a question, um, and, and maybe it's more of a technique or maybe it has to do with the way the software works, but how do you decide, or if you, if you have several different manufacturers of cameras, how do you decide what your easiest path is, which camera to match to? Um, I mean, everything within CineMatch is, is a two-way transform. So um we need to ensure that it works both ways so it's it's really it's it's um probably the 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 best decision to make is um on codec strength so if you if you have a camera which is shooting 8 bit log and you know that that might fall apart over heavy color grading then maybe you would want to match everything towards that to begin with and then um and then work on your creative grade after that but in terms of that that's just more in terms of the camera codec strength it's not the strength of cinematch the strength of cinematch will 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 match everything either way fine so it, it really just is up to the user yeah, I'm assuming most times you'll have an A camera and or you'll have a camera that shoots the majority of the footage yeah. and then you want to bring in other cameras and then it's an easier decision to make. But that's that's what I was looking for. Sure. If it, I mean, if you like, um, you know, there's all things like stock footage and, and and if you know what that was shot on and, and the drone footage, things can get added into projects at a later date. So probably like if you if you're aiming everything towards your A camera that you know the priority that most of your shots were were in, then I suppose you won't have any nasty surprises down the line. Great. Okay, do we have any other questions from the audience? How does Cinematch compare with ASUS for camera matching? Ah, okay, so, um, so what, Aces, Aces is um, scene referred space, which Cinematch is, but but what it's missing is that um, sensor data. So what it's doing is it's converting your gamut and gamma uh, with um, a transform to convert it into Aces space, but it still has the color characteristics of the sensor. So if so as soon as you try to camera match in aces, depending on the, the color reproduction strength of the camera, then you will find that it might, you might just need to do as many adjustments in aces as you would out of aces, just because the color characteristics of the sensor are different. Whereas what we do, is 
we've designed this specifically for camera matching. So it's tailor made to multiple camera shoots. So it's like we take a whole lot more data from how the sensor sees the how how the sensor sees the scene. So um, we not only convert the gamut and the gamma, but we also do a lot of little color changes to to get it much more in line with where it needs to be. Um, hopefully that answers the question. I think you're muted, Michael. All right, we've got a few more minutes. If we have any other more uh, questions uh, from the audience, please speak up now. If uh, you have, I have a very, yeah. very quick one. Um, is the is the AC Log three profile for the R five actually available at the moment? The um, it will be available very soon. Um, okay. Yeah, we're just, we're, we we yeah we it it will be in the next update. Oh, lovely, great. Um, we'll let you know. Nice. Thank you. No worries. Um, just a very quick question. When you're dealing with uh, film convert, if you want to back off the look, do you just put, is the key just to pull down the, um, the print to film slider? Yes. So, so that will, that will bring down the, the, the print and there's a, there's, uh, the, uh, the, the slider that's just above that is the film color, which is, the um which is the film color so if if you wanted to, if you take that down to zero then you you have your original log colors as well so you can use those sliders to like take the edge off the film color if you want and also take the to take the edge off the um the contrast cool is there much of a difference with the c500 um sensor profile that you guys have just created compared to the c70 no, the 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 um we found that the 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 color um the color reproduction of the cinema, new cinema line of Canon was um superb. There's not there's not there's not much difference in 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 the cameras in terms of image quality. Um yeah, the, the color reproduction is very consistent across the range. Cool. Thanks, mate. No worries. Great. Okay. Um, if you have additional questions, um, would uh, Hennessy, would you rather that they send questions to support or how would you like them to reach out if they have additional questions? Yeah, you can email us through our support email. Otherwise, you can also go to any of our social medias on Instagram and Facebook. If you just search up Film Convert, all of the details will be there. If you also want, like we can drop in our email addresses so you can just flick us an email, but otherwise we're happy to help. Great, yeah, let's go ahead and have you do that in the, in the chat before we leave. You know how to do that? In the lower right or lower center of the screen where it says chat. But by the way, guys, just a quick note. Um, I'll try and turn my camera on so you can see me. Oh, no, I can't. Um, just the CineMatch software is by far the simplest way that I've ever found to color grade um, vision. I actually use it to give my footage a look and don't have to do too much more off the bat with it. Like I, I feel like the colors that I get um, from the C500 when I use CineMatch just are far outweigh all the dicking around with DaVinci Resolve when I have to add LUTs and try to color space transform and all of that, you know, no tree bullshit like it seems to work so much more easily when you just use cine match and i found like i don't know how you guys have that um activated that 709 um like convert tick but like um automatic luck creator whatever it is when you click that um 709 convert it just seems to do exactly what um it would do if you're in the node tree and you're applying um, a lot like from Arri, for example. So if you convert it from Canon's color space to Arri's color space and you click the 709 
convert button, it's the exact same colors as if you then go back into a node tree and don't do that and put a um, put Ari's you know standard 709 LUT on. So it just makes it really, really easy, I found, to get an instant look. Cool. Thank you very much for the feedback. That's great. Yeah, we, I mean, we were we we were we've been we were in development for a good four years. So we're just we we were really like just we we've gone into um, breaking everything down to make it as simple as possible and just give you exactly what you need. And um, yeah, with, with those seven and nine transforms, and uh, we we just we tried to make we've made those adjustments as, as pleasurable as possible. And uh, so that you can just, you, if you've got a quick turnaround, you can just click that on and, and go out. So um, yeah, thanks very much for the kind words. Yeah, no worries at all. Yeah, cheers. Okay, so Hennessy has posted some links in the chat, uh, in the chat window. And um, I wanted to say thank you very much to Hennessy and to Sam. Um, I think it's a very informative uh, event. Um, it's obvious from the demo how simple the software is to use, and I can't wait to try it. Um, and like I said, if you have questions, uh, you can go ahead and send a direct message to them, or if you have a problem getting in touch, just reach out to Charles or I at Canon, and we can we can uh, get the information over to them. And uh, with that, I'd like to call an end to the meeting today and to tell everyone, thank you very much for coming. Thanks for taking the time out of your afternoon and spending it with us. And everyone stay safe and healthy. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for having us. And thank you, everyone, for watching. It was fun. Thank you. All right.